Good evening. It is update time. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on the Toad. The Toad XJ. Coming along. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. We are long overdue for a Toad update. Look at it. It is just beautiful. Look at that front end. Nice, painted, straight, crisp. Oh, I love it. I love a clean XJ. So before I get any further, I just want to ask you guys a question. Are you finally ready for some Dan H merch? I popped on a new tee and realized that you guys have been asking me for them and uh, maybe I'll start printing out some tees for you. I uh, figure tees, hoodies, uh, beanies, stickers, let me know what you want and uh, I'll try to send them out there. And of course, I'd appreciate it if, if you bought them. Support the channel for more cool projects like the Toad. So let's dig into the Toad. Let's see what I did this past week. All right, here we go. The Toad nose, the nose of the Toad. Everything is nice and straight again on the front, except for this fender. We weren't gonna address that because I don't have a new fender for it. I don't feel like doing body work, but I did do some body work to the header panel. If you remember, this header panel was completely smashed up in here. So what I did was I made a little jig out of some tape and some scrap wood. I got the sucker in line as best as I could. And then I filled the whole channel behind here with Bondo. And I mushed in some deck screws for some support. And when that was dry, I flipped it over and I just slathered this whole front piece with regular Bondo, sanded it down, used a lot of filler primer, and painted it. Also painted and clear coated both of these headlight bezels. They came out really good. And of course, I got fresh new factory headlights. They look real good for now. Maybe one day I'll upgrade to LEDs. Now my first paint job was, uh, wasn't too good because, well, I accidentally used the wrong color. My bad, I used bright silver metallic, and obviously everybody knows the XJs uh, of this year are silver stone metallic. So uh, we had a color discrepancy, but when I repainted it the right paint code, the paint I got didn't exactly match anyway. Not sure if this camera could pick it up, but it is slightly different. Hopefully the dark is just dirt and I'll, I'll buff it out, right? It'll all buff out. But yeah, so I got the header panel squared away. I touched up the grill in this middle section a little bit. That was scuffed. I think there was a big scuff up here. But yeah, just a little Bondo, a lot of primer, the uh, filler primer, and uh, a couple coats of paint and some clear. This is Rust-Oleum clear coat from Home Depot. Always gets the job done. Let's see, I did these bumper ends. Oh man, got a casualty already. My paint jobs are okay, but they're not professional grade. Just gets the job done. The bumper ends, these were, I don't want to say they were terrible, but they weren't great. But uh, did a real nice job getting, getting them back to be uh, presentable. I mean, you know, that's, uh, that's not a bad job when you look at it. It's pretty clean. So we got the bumper ends in. Everything is installed just about factory hardware. I don't have those big aluminum rivets to attach the bumper end to the lower valence, but I use plastic rivets. No big deal. That gets the job done. Of course, I also painted and cleared this new bumper that I got on Amazon. It was only like 80 something bucks for a whole new bumper. That came out great. It did have a little bug stick to the clear down under here, but it's okay because you cover it with a bumper end. And to top it off, I did a little VHT nightshade on all my amber lenses, made it a little bit darker. I think it looks much better having that silver black contrast as opposed to all that orangey yellow stuff. Never really liked it. What you do is sand these really good with 400 grit, let it dry, then you hit it with the VHT nightshade. About four passes, I do one, two, then I flip it to this side, one, two, and this is what you get with four passes of the nightshade. And then you finish it off with some clear. Has a nice little shine to it that's protected with the clear and looks pretty good. If you see here, I got these nice little Torx bits fasteners. 
Uh, if you guys have these Torx bits on your XJ, let me know. I'm curious to see when they started putting these on Cherokees. I want to say 2000 and 2001 started getting these Torx. Uh, before that, it was just a regular Phillips head. Let me know what you got. Very, very curious. So there, there's the nose of the toad. Everything is installed to factory spec. The lines are just beautiful. If you want to know how to center up a header panel, what you do is you screw in the top, top bolt up here in the corner. Make sure this corner is nice. Then you come along to the opposing corner. You get that lined up real nice. You could push and pull the header panel so this gets squared away with this edge, this top edge. Then you could adjust all these top bolts um, up and down. You could pull this back or push it in to make sure it lines up with the hood. And then finally, what you want to do is you get this bottom screw in that's behind the headlight. To do that, you could push and pull on the lower part of the fender and everything just lined up beautifully. Not too bad for a, a busted up front end. So moving on, let's go to the wheels. Obviously, you guys saw these already. These are factory 15 inch XJ Echo wheels. Factory rims on 30 by nine and a half. Sitting pretty on a rough country. Three inch budget boost. Got the pucks up there with new shocks. And of course, in the rear, I got rear leaf springs that I had to add a leaf kit to. These bolts right here coming down. <laughs> These are my extra bolts I added in. The new airbox bolts. They're really nice. I had to tap and thread one of them. And that's pretty much it cosmetically for the front. Now a big, big maneuver that I'm gonna have to pull is to remove all of this door cladding. Ugh, I hate that stuff, it's so gross. So you gently peel it off and then you could get a whizzy wheel or a 3M eraser on a drill. It'll take all that sticky crap off and then you'll have a nice, beautiful, clean body line on the door instead of faded, ugly trim. Gross. And moving to the back, we got these rear bumper ends that I restored. Painted these and cleared these too. They came out really nice. Also painted behind the bumper end. But to get these bumper ends on, what you do is you just line them up with these little brackets and you slide them in back to front. Then you could tuck in the little piece of trim and the wheel well nicely. And then you move to the bottom where there is a quarter inch self-tapping screw. You could just reapply that there in that bottom little hole. And then the other fastener is in the back. That is a 10 millimeter. It's 10 millimeter head with a 10 millimeter nut on it. I use a nice little handheld box wrench inside. Then I'll use the old impact gun to zip it in place. And that's it. A pretty simple install for the bumper ends. But that's it. I'm really happy with the way they came out. I love the way the painted bumper ends look over the faded black textured plastic. I'm thinking I'm going to do some VHT nightshade on the taillights. I'm not sure if I want to do this amber red to match or do something different. Maybe I'll hit it with a little bit of red and then I'll tint everything together. So you'll see tinted red with a little bit of white and no amber. Not sure yet. Haven't thought about it too much. But what I'll do is I'll put a nice bright amber LED bulb for the turn signal so it'll shine through whatever tint and color distortion I choose. 4x4 badging. Still looking pretty good. Jeep emblem on the lift gate. Uh, looking great. And 4.0 liter. Everything is beautiful the way it should be. Only issue is this little... <laughs> I don't know what happened here big crack and uh paint is rusting chipping this is pretty terrible actually so i'm just gonna make a nice line across here sand down everything below it and i'll just redo this whole bottom little lip and that will be just dandy other than that lift gate is in great shape i was thinking about putting on my old, old beach jeep lift gate that has the rear spoiler on it. I haven't decided to do that yet. That is my factory Orvis spoiler. The first one I ever got from Germany back in like 2010. And here is my third brake light, my ugly Jolly Rancher. One of the things I absolutely hate about the Jeep Cherokee XJ from the 1997 to 2001 models is this ugly thing of a taillight that I call the Jolly Rancher. It's disgusting. 
I think that when they redesigned this in 1997 to give it the updated appearance, I think they forgot to include a taillight into the tailgate, which is why it's just, it doesn't fit. It's so ugly and bulky. It just looks like an afterthought. I was hanging out with Doug from DE in the Garage not too long ago, and I noticed on his Dodge Dakota, I think it's a 96, he's got the same Jolly Rancher on his Dakota liftgate, which is, it's incredible. So now I know where that came from. It's a Mopar part and uh, they made use of it. When they stopped making those Dakotas, they just carried over and uh, they put them on XJs. Uh, here we go, moving along more. I had to reattach the bracket. That was pretty easy to do. Just riveted in the new bracket right where the old bracket went. And this was kind of dangling, it's flapping off. And uh, I just clipped it back into place. Now. I, I don't know what this stuff is, guys. It, it's not rust. If you look close, it's like a, it's like a cement kind of glue. It, it feels, it feels like stone or rock. It's like mortar. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it is a B to get off. And I don't feel like ruining this paint. I know this is ugly, but uh, if I mess with it, I might make it worse. I, I just, I just clipped it in place the way it's supposed to be, and uh, that's really all there is to it. Don't. Don't do something crazy and glue or chop it up or, you know, I, I hate ruining the factory look. It's it's not too hard to figure out these these things. If, uh, if you want me to make a full video on how to attach all these guys, I'll probably end up doing it on, on the beach jeep. And, uh, well, that's coming eventually, as you know. But yeah, uh, factory, fender flare, they just clip right in and uh, it looks good. Um, could be better without this, but... What are you gonna do? I don't know what this stuff is. And now I can see it, and it's ugly. It failed, ah, whatever. Down here, to this body panel, this is the only piece of rust. It's ugly rust, but it's not too prevalent. Ah, I'm hoping I could fix this cosmetically, or I could replace the whole door. I'd rather not do that. I'll see if I could fix this first, then I'll fix the door, or replace the door. Uh, not 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 terrible so it's enough to uh to glaze over well not glaze over in the body sense i'm not gonna put glazing putty on it it'll just rot more but i meant to gloss over it no not gloss over it either what am i saying skip it it's enough to just skip it for now and uh, move on to something else but yeah the ugliest part would have to be this ding that little door chunk and the, the tailgate lift gate but uh, that is it. That is it cosmetically. I think it came out fantastic. Uh, very proud of this little somewhat rust-free toad. As you can see, I got the battery in. Battery is also unplugged. Just trying to save the juice. But yeah, uh, the battery tray came out fantastic. Uh, underneath was basically rust-free. Did a little touch-up paint on the bottom just for show. I found all factory brackets somewhere in my parts pile which is really cool because it didn't come with any of that and uh, I even have this little tie down piece so complete factory installation on the battery this is a new Walmart Everstart battery and uh, yeah here is the radiator support uh, the header panel support all that is factory uh, painted and everything lines up just beautifully nothing like a good factory install. The fan shroud is intact, which is completely amazing. I love that. Behind the fan shroud is the thermostat housing. Popped in a new thermostat. Clean this area up. This whole area is just covered in grime. It's really, really filthy. Even after I power wash this thing, it's just really disgusting. Uh, also, there's a lot of goop uh, it's leaking out by the exhaust, so when this thing runs and it gets hot, it starts to smoke a little bit. We're going to dial this in a little better one day. We're going to take off the valve cover, put in a new valve gasket, and then put on a new valve cover. That's a whole new video on itself. Uh, also going to do a fuel rail. We'll talk about that a little bit down the future. But yeah, so thermostat housing uh, is back on. We use the old one. Sometimes they get brittle and crack. I had no problems with this one. Put a Motorrad uh, 195 thermostat in there. Operates great. Jeep Cherokees love factory 195s.
Another thing I discovered in here was this line <laughs> was ripped out of the connector. This goes to the AC compressor, and uh, if this toad didn't have AC, it's a good chance it was, uh, you know, wasn't plugged in. So that was uh, a quick fix. As you can see down there, I got a new Mopar oil filter, which means I did the oil. Yes, I did. Change the oil. Very proud of a good oil change. Uh, one of the best things you could do to keep your 4 liter running. Over here on this side, well, there is the air filter box with the brand new air filter in. Yes, a brand new air filter. And just for demonstration purposes, I wanted to show you those new bolts. Everything is nice and clean. Bolted in, completely a Jeep factory with, uh, with a lot of anti-seize on it. Uh, there we go. Now this did need a high pressure power steering line. High pressure goes from up here, down around the back, zigzags all down there, and then it enters the steering box right about in that front area. But as you can see, the return line also is it's really close up to that high pressure line. That return line comes up the back and goes right in here to this little nub in the back. If you're ever replacing this line, do not pull off this little nipple. This little plastic nipple, it's extremely brittle. It will break, so what you should do is you gotta cut this hose, and then you can put a little slit down the side with a knife to, uh, to get that part off the nipple, and then you can slide a new hose on. If you just take off the clamp and pull on it, Guaranteed you will break that thing right off 60% of the time. It will break every time. That doesn't make sense. So if you guys know you have to do one of these power steering lines, I highly recommend doing them both at the same time. Chances are they're corroded and rusted on, and if you try to remove one to get to the other, you'll end up breaking them. If you just cut the line right to begin with, you can zip that bolt out with an 18 millimeter, and then you can just put the new one on nice and easy without having to deal with rust and torches and all that awful stuff. It's, uh, it's not pretty if you're trying to save one of these lines. I think for 50 bucks, you could get both of these lines at the auto parts store. Let's see if I can find a link to you. Maybe something on Amazon. I think you can get a Dorman part on Amazon. Everything's just about the same anyway. All made in China. So, yeah, we got, uh, we got a lot going on. We got a lot done. Let's see. Let me talk about some other stuff I want to do. Um, yeah, I still have to do the transfer case issue. So, if you take a look at the Toad's front drive shaft, you'll notice that it is not there. <laughs> Why would someone take off a front drive shaft? I could only think of two reasons. Either the front differential, gears would be smashed to crumbs, or the transfer case is busted. Something busted with the transfer case. The only other thing I was thinking is maybe somebody wanted to try to save gas money by removing the front drive shaft. Don't know why they would do that because this is a 242 and uh, you don't need to remove the drive shaft. This thing has two wheel drive, so I don't know. Since I took the front diff cover off and I observed the gears not smashed, I'm thinking it could be this shifter linkage. I think the shifter linkage is jacked up. I'm going to attempt to try to restore this. It's it's all the way down, but it still says it's in four wheel drive part time. So I think I have one more notch to go. So I'm gonna try to get into this selector and like slide that tab, there it is, slide that tab down the shaft a little bit more. Hopefully that will solve the problem. That's That's what I'm betting on. That's what I'm putting the Dan H. Buck on, that it's easy as pie. And now that I'm down here, I think a future project should be a trans pan gasket. <laughs> and uh, we definitely need a new exhaust. This thing leaks, but uh, we gotta kick that can a little further down the road. All right, so here are some more of the things we've done. I got the air filter, of course, uh, Walmart brand. I got a, what is this? Pretty sure it's a Felpro, yeah, Felpro thermostat gasket got myself a mopar 
oil filter. Use number M0090. Or is that an O? M O? Yeah. yeah. Always use a little bit of this baby. We'll shut up them noisy lifters. The toad wasn't that bad. This is the Motorrad 195 thermostat. That's the port number for that. This is a reminder to tell you guys that I went ahead and I tinted the third brake light. And if you want to see a tint video, let me know. We have a door video coming up. We're going to do a door switch, a master switch on the driver door. Oops. Uh, we're also going to do a window regulator for that. So stay tuned for that video. We are going to put in front diff oil. Got myself some 75W90. We also got the cherry flavored gasket maker. And I uh, got a drive shaft somewhere in the backyard. Ooh, what else do I have? I have hardware. Where's my hardware? Just want to show you guys what a tumbler can do. I should put that as a link for you guys. Yeah, I just threw some of these old things I found in my ammo tumbler. Look at that. It's like brand new. Brackets, bolts, everything. Got all the crud off. So we're going to fix the new drive shaft with those guys. Coming around, we're going to do a whole rear sway bar video. Check this out. Found the rear sway bar with the brackets and everything. Previous owner must have tossed their rear sway bar. And I'm going to want to drive this on the road, so I want good road banners. So we're going to do a rear sway bar video. I got a couple poly bushings to attach at the ends. Uh, that'll be uh, nice and stiff, nice performance bushings. Got regular bushings to attach to the body. I got new end links. These uh, these are a must because the old ones are super rusty and that bushing always gets totally disgusting. And I was able to find some factory hardware for them. All I need is four 15 millimeter bolts to zip it to the body. Uh, the bolts go through here, yeah. So sway bar video coming soon. Over here we have the blower motor resistor. We got another butte from China, but uh, <laughs> if it works for a little bit, it's better than the one that's not working now. We got some AC. We're gonna top off our 134A AC, and hopefully we'll get this AC working again. Get a little colder out. We might not need it, but it's good to have it yeah, on a nice hot October day. And moving along, we got a valve cover gasket, and it comes with the little tiny grommets. These little seals, they just plug right into here. You got to save these metal things from your Jeep. You just pry out the old bushings, and then you could put it all together on some nice, clean, tumbled factory hardware. This is the valve cover that I'm restoring. I pried out all these things already. I'll show you how to do it on the other valve cover when we do that video. Now, check this baby out. Got ourselves a nice, beautiful aluminum fuel rail. This thing is gorgeous. There is some assembly required. We gotta just, oops, I dinged it. Man, stupid, I'm sorry. We gotta assemble this, uh, some assembly required. And of course, nice new injectors that are obviously four ports. I love that upgrade. So that's going to be a great video. Can't wait to finally do that. These fuel rails are awesome. I already installed one of those in Stevens WJ. And last but not least, I got a little surprise here. I want to give a shout out to my man Timberlake, Mark Timberlake up in Massachusetts. He always hooks me up with these chips. I got the chips and the peanuts. These are going to give me the remote unlock and lock and panic button. Factory XJ stuff. This goes in the overhead console. And that may or may not get a headliner video, a console upgrade. Probably going to get advanced to an overhead console video. I just have to make sure I have all the parts. All right, guys. So there you have it. There's all the projects that we've done on the Toad so far. Episode 6 is in the books. It's looking good. Coming along good, Toad. <laughs> nice, Toad. So this is all the stuff that is soon to be. And hopefully it won't be burdened by what has been... Oh.
Anyway, thanks for watching episode six of the Toad series. Thanks for uh, participating in my new format. I've been doing uh, doing all the work and then talking about it with you guys after the fact. So I uh, appreciate you hanging in there. I'm going to be doing more project specific oriented videos coming up in the future going over all that stuff i just showed you the uh, videos will focus on that one specific task as opposed to uh, an overview of everything i did during the week i just wanted to, to catch up with some videos uh, put something out there for you guys to watch because it's been a while and uh, you know it did basic stuff that i've done before so now we could get into cool stuff like uh, the fuel rail and all that other stuff i talked about We'll focus in on things you guys want to watch, so feel free to message me. Let me know what you want to see uh, involving the Toad build, and, uh, and then we'll do it. Sky's the limit once again, and uh, I think that's going to do it. So thank you for watching once again. Remember to like and subscribe. Let me know what kind of merch you want. I'm going to send that out. It could be a Christmas gift for your significant other. Cuddle up in a Dan H. hoodie, you know, for the holidays. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace.